I remind you, O painter, that whenever you, in your own judgment, or in the opinion of another, discover some error in your works, you should correct it, so that when you do show the work, you do not also display the error. You do not make excuses to yourself, persuading yourself that you will be able to rebuild your reputation with your next work, because painting does not die in the act of its creation as does music, but will for a long time bear witness to your lack of knowledge. If you argue that in making corrections, time is going to waste which, if directed towards another work, would greatly increase what you could earn, you should learn that money earned in excess of our daily requirements is not worth much, and if you desire an abundance of wealth, you will end up not using it. It does not belong to you in just the same way that all treasures not put to use belongs to us all. Whatever you earn that you do not need during your life is in the hands of others regardless of your intent. But if you will study and perfect your works in line with the theory of the two kinds of perspective, you will leave behind works which will bestow upon you more honor than money would do. Because money is celebrated only for its own sake and not for that of he who possesses it who is like a magnet for envy. He is a target for thieves, and he loses his reputation as a wealthy man along with his life, and the fame of the treasure, and not the treasure who remains. The glory of the virtue of mortals is far greater than that of their treasures. How many emperors, how many princes have there been to whom no memory remains, yet they strove only after territory and wealth to secure their reputations? How many have there been who lived in material poverty in order to enrich their lives with virtue? The poor man has been as much more successful than the rich in this goal, as virtue surpasses wealth. Do you not see that treasure in itself does not heap praise on its accumulator after his life is spent, as this knowledge which continues to provide testimony and memorial to his creator because it is the daughter of whoever engendered it, and not a stepdaughter like money? If you say that by means of such treasure you could better satisfy your earning for gluttony and excess, and that you could not do this through virtue, consider others who have satisfied only the filthy desire of the body like other base animals. Where is their renown? If your excuse is that the struggle against poverty has left you no time to study and truly ennoble yourself, blame no one but yourself, because it is the study of virtue that is food for both body and soul. How many philosophers have there been who have been rich, but who have given their fortune away so as not to be corrupted by it? If your excuse is that you have children to feed, a little will suffice for them. See to it that their sustenance be the virtues, which are the true riches, for they never leave us, departing only with life itself. If you say you wish first to accumulate some capital wealth as an endowment for your old age, I say the pursuit of virtue will never let you down, nor let you grow senile, and the haven of the virtues will be filled with dreams and vain hopes.